through Jahan e Khusro, I can take you into a realm of ecstasy. Aql ke madar se se ut, ishq ke mein kade me a, jame fanao be khudi, ab to piya jo ho so ho. Move from the realm of the mind into the realm of the heart. As I grew up, you know, I had the biggest driving force in me was the urge to connect. And that urge to connect slowly started growing and developing. I found various ways to connect. First of all, I came from a certain culture with its own angst, with its own heritage. That was one very big driving force. Then I found myself attracted to sketching, painting. Then I started working and I got into advertising and from there I realized film is a very powerful way of connecting. So I began to make films and each film took me closer to my heart, took me closer to my calling. And then I realized that poetry was driving me in a very a powerful way, although I was not a poet and I didn't want to write poetry, but it was pulling me in. It was like a mirror to myself. I was understanding society through poetry. I was trying to understand myself through poetry. And then I realized that uh, the poetry of the mystics was the ultimate, ultimate form of connecting. And that is how Jahan-e Khosro came to be. Jahan-e Khosro is dedicated to Amir Khosro and uh, to his poetry, and not just to his poetry, it's to his very uh, kind of uh, spirit of, of bringing people together, the spirit of, of uh, bringing cultures together, the, the spirit of bringing languages together. So for me, he is indeed a master blender, and this Jahan Khusro is all about blending, his blending of cultures, blending of rhythms, and you realize over these three days that we are into a world without boundaries, we are discussing oneness of the human race and it's a very, very cathartic experience, these three days of Jahan Khusro. You know, Jahan Khusro has a very interesting trajectory, a very interesting journey, how it began, how I was in Kashmir and I found people getting very, very hardened how music was going out of their lives, how the tenderness and softness was going out of their lives, and how Sufiana Kalam was shrinking into the khanqas. And it's through the Kashmiri khanqas that I realized the beauty of Sufiana Kalam. And Sufiana Kalam is something that really opens your hearts. It just makes it tender, it cleanses you. So this kind of an experience was something which happened in the midst of a valley which was getting very, very tough and very hardened and very taking very harsh stands. And I thought this kind of thing should be re realized on stage. And when I came to Delhi, I went to Ajmer Sharif. In fact, I took a whole group of Kashmiri musicians and I made them sing in the Darga. And one day, one of the musicians came to me and he said, he was crying. And he said, uh, you know, you've got a big gift from this darga. So then I realized slowly over time that what this gift was. And this gift was really summer. Sama is really a very liberating form of music. It's a music which liberates music and takes it to people at large. India has a huge tradition of classical music and that music is contained in, uh, what shall I say, in gharanas, in, in kind of, it's, a, it's become a realm of knowledge. So Sama takes it into the realm of the heart. It, it opens it up to people. And then you find slowly that people are experiencing on a very large scale ecstasy. And that's what I felt that to 
experience ecstasy it's, there's no way of doing it but through sama and jahan khusro became a kind of a re- realizing of this sama Underst- the little understanding i gathered from the the chishti khanqa of uh, hazrat mohin chishti was how sama becomes very important to bring people together up that doesn't happen so easily you know it happens when you work throughout the year you find poems that have taken you through the to the path of ecstasy you find artists you give those poems to these artists you work with them with a sense of compassion you work with them with a, with a sense of understanding their voices you bring all kinds of instruments together and through these rehearsals you realize that something unexpected is being born and that something which is unexpected is really taking you into another zone it's taking you into the zone of into the realm of the heart you know? and when each person sings i sit there in front of them and i realize ke and i pray for them and i pray that their tribute to the saint to the to the to the poetry of the saint is accepted and once that poetry is accepted it enters into the heart of the audience Now that's a very interesting process which i have experienced myself day in and day out while all the jahan e khusros have been happening is that connection with the people is a connection with the poet with 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 the soul of his poetry and the audience actually uh, a phenomena like jahan e khusro is something which i can't do alone you know it comes out of faith and belief and the biggest faith and belief in this festival has been meera's faith and belief and it doesn't come as just faith and belief it comes with a lot of detailed understanding and inputs that go into the festival all the detailed planning all the aesthetics which which is very kind of uh, invisible which she brings with a lot of precision so that's a very big thing that she brings to jahan e khusro and without her there would be no jahan e khusro we have about uh, 150 artists sometimes even more over 3 days at jahan e khusro and they come from different parts of the world we've had at one go artists who have come from morocco sudan iran um turkey india bangladesh uzbekistan pakistan germany i mean we've had uh, sufi artists coming from countries where you wouldn't imagine that such art exists but the beauty of um, um sharing the same stage is, is uh, really what draws them here the jahan e khusro festival is spread over 3 days at arab ki sarai which is a little courtyard in the humayun to monuments complex uh it's a enchanting little space very difficult to deal with but very enchanting and uh, muzaffar when he when we started this festival in 2001 he was very sure he didn't want a location it was just everything just pat so we found this in fact uh, long time back in the early 90s we used to live in azamuddin east and come to this place for a walk from the back door and it was always in a mess it was uh, you know people were defecating there it was terrible and for some reason he said that i want to do it here uh the beauty is that it's like a it's like a long rectangular space almost like an opera house and at the end of it is the most stunning ruin which becomes the natural backdrop and behind the ruin are these beautiful trees which we get the opportunity to light and the stage is just uh, it's almost so it becomes like the like the plinth of a darga if you have been to one that is where people come artists come and surrender and they sing not to an audience but to that divine spirit and that's the kind of stage we were able to put together there it's only when we stopped doing it in 2013 that every day i would meet people 
and they would say what happened to jahane khusro i booked my tickets to come and it was to delhi specially to come to the event and the event didn't happen or oh, i've been going there every day looking for some information i haven't got it and i never realized that it had become the cult festival really of um, not only delhi but the country see the biggest challenge that one faced in jahane khusro is to make people believe to make people believe that this is a is a worthwhile experiment today it's an experiment of cleansing people it's a cleanse experiment of bringing people together and once they begin to believe that then there's no looking back and i think today we reached a point when people have begun to believe in jahan e khusro into the spirit and the essence of jahan e khusro which is the coming together of of the whole world at large today the whole society is getting hardened people are taking stands they're trying to judge people so in this very judgmental society you need a space and time when things are not judged where you are just flowing freely with uh, with the spirit of ecstasy and that is what jahan e khusro is all about and once you get this energy from people from the audience then there is no looking back for two years we have had it so slowly people have been asking questions kyun nahi ho raha jahan e khusro kyun nahi ho raha jahan e khusro and suddenly you find a friend who says nahi jahan e khusro hoga the whole spirit of belief coming to its ultimate boil you know it come ultimate fruition and that's what person like neena puri did for us and she said jahan e khusro hoga wo zarur hoga so it's really the belief coming to a point where then everybody begins to believe you know once one person begins to believe then it's a widespread belief and that belief is not just uh, uh, what shall i say shallow belief it's a very deep belief it's a belief which drives governments it drives corporates it drives all kinds of people to an idea and that idea becomes supreme i've been involved with music as a child my tutelage under ustad bari gulam ali khan sahab of the patalia grana at the age of 12 still reverberates with every rustle of the wind as a lover of music i have attended jahane khusro on several occasions marveling at the maestros hoping to be forever lost in their excellence music has great powers it makes you cry while you smile it can heal your soul while freshening old wounds it is simply magical in its magnificence it gives me eternal peace i have missed these healing abilities as jahane khusro has not graced us these last few years How can I, or any one of us, resist this temptation? The Diaspora Foundation, with its objective to encourage excellence in the field of music, is proud to partner with the Rumi Foundation to bring back this wonderful celebration. Jahan e Khusro is the coming together of uh, people from different faiths, different color, different creeds. under the same sky for three nights with the same heartbeat and that's what makes it very special for me jahan e khusro to me is enlightenment because there cannot be a truer connection to divinity jahan e khusro to me is really the tenderness of the heart and tears in the eyes you know because i think these are the two big gifts that are cherished by saints 